Welcome to Around the House, sponsored by Romac Building Supply. I'm your host, Don Magruder. If you like today's video, please go to our website, aroundthehouse.tv, and sign up for our YouTube channel, and sign up for our weekly newsletter. In today's Around the House, we're going to have Cindy Cooliard. She's the Vice President of DeBarco Building Corporation, and Cindy's going to be here to discuss an age in place. It's a big issue. As you get older, things happen. And today we're going to explore the topic of aging in place. Hello, Cindy. How are you doing? Hi, Don. I'm doing great. Great to be here. Cindy, tell us a little bit about yourself and DeBarco Building Corporation. Well, DeBarco Building Corporation was founded in 1988 by my mother, Diana Coolyard. It is a family-run business. Um, we hold all three Class A licenses. Diana Holden, the State Certified Residential. My dad is a general contractor and I'm a building contractor. So we've been in the area for a while. And you do all type of new home building, remodeling, commercial. Yes. You, yes. you build homes from, uh, you're, in fact, you're one of the few home builders today that will build a total project from the ground up. And you're, you're immensely involved in it, isn't it? Oh, yes. We specialize in custom homes. Uh, now, where is your office located? You're one of the few home builders that actually have office still. <laughs> yes, our office has always been at, um, in Wildwood at 609 North Old Wire Road. And if someone had a question about today's show, how can you be reached? They can call our office line at seven at three five two seven four eight five two two eight. Give us your concept of what aging in place means to you. What aging in place means the reassurance of being able to stay, make your house a home for a lifetime, depending on either if it's true aging in place for the accessibility needs or if it's a fall or a break, um, there's, it's the ability to stay in your home where you're comfortable to be around family and, and stay and, in and your home. I guess, Cindy, we're in Florida, the capital of people come down and retire. Yes. And a lot of times a, a young retiree will come down here in the late 50s, early 60s, and they're feeling great and everything's wonderful. But in 10 years, they're 70 or 72. And unfortunately, there's accidents and medical events that occur. Uh, exactly. Do you think people prepare as they move down here, prepare enough for their housing to say, hey, what happens if I have a stroke? What happens if I get arthritis and have to have a knee replacement? Do you see a lot of people making those plans ahead of time? Some do while we're building the home, um, especially if they're an older couple, knowing that they're probably going to live in that home for a long time. But there's kind of three types. They're the ones that prepare, the ones that don't prepare for aging in place, and then there's the emergency. You break a hip, you break a leg. Well, let's But face, not enough prepare. Yeah, and let's face it, things happen. Yes. And when you sit down and talk to clients, do you, and especially those retiring, do you discuss aging in place issues? Yes, we do. Now, you have a certification that's very, very important. Talk about your certification. I got designated through the National Association of Home Builders as it's CAPS, we call it CAPS for short, mm -hmm. which is Certified Agent in Place Specialist. Now, you have a particular understanding of agent in place uh, because it hits close to home. Tell us why it's so important to you, uh, mobility and agent in place issues. Well, I have a daughter, my daughter Jackie. She is disabled. She was born premature, so she's been disabled from birth. And her disability is um, she can't walk fully on her own. So she uses handrails. She has an electric chair. So there's always been, throughout my life, of issues of her having to face with accessibility. So it became a passion of mine. Does that give you a unique perspective that other builders don't have? I would hope so. I think you it think does. So? Let's yes. talk about some particulars, for example. Let's talk about areas where you can make changes in ages in place. First thing coming inside the house, the actual entry of houses, you, you have to step in the door. What can people do to age in place or prepare a home for aging in place? Well, if we're building the home new, you can always make that threshold level yep. and not have a step down. But most homes, if they don't have a step down in the front, they have one in the garage or on their pool deck in the back lanai. So to be able to add a threshold ramp is one of the simpler things to do, but a lot of times is required for people to be released to come home from rehab or for hip surgery or 
something like that. And, and I do know there are very specific standards on ramps and yes. angles. A lot of times people don't follow those, do they? No, it should only be one inch per foot slope. And, and, that, and that's a pretty modest slope. Yeah. Interiors and exterior doorways of the house. You know, wheelchairs, you need 36 inches. And, and I know when we see people come through our doors, why don't you put a three foot door instead of two eight door? Because hospital beds, explain to that and expanding doorways and such. Well, most homes have a three foot entryway door. Yep. But the garage door, um, and depending off the, if they have sliders out the back, they're usually not. They're either a two eight or a two six. Florida code does, has adapted somewhat to where you have one bathroom and the house have to, has to have a 36 inch door. But ideally, all doors should be 36 inches. And you know the sad thing? A 36 inch door, most of the time, is the same price as a 2.8 or 2.6. Yes. There's no additional cost. It's just a design issue, isn't it? It is. And, and the accommodation to make a 2.8 into a, a 3.0 door is not hard to do. You do it all the time. Yes, we do it all the time. To me, one of the biggest areas for aging in place where folks can maintain their dignity is the bathroom. Yes. I mean, let's face it, the bathroom is uh, very personal. Uh, it's amazing what can happen in the bathroom with roll-in showers. Discuss some of the age in place ideas you put in your homes and remodels for the bathroom. The most safety-wise is backing for grab bars. Absolutely. Um, and if you're adding grab bars at a later date, you need to take the time to cut the drywall and add the proper backing. Because many, many falls come from that assurance that you think you have when you have that grab bar and if it's in there with just toggles and you fall. Yeah, and you, and you see that people are putting a 300 pound grab bar with toggle bolts that is as strong as the half inch drywall. Yes. Makes no sense. So you suggest, don't you suggest using like a tube of 12 back in or something like yes, that? Yes, at least, yes. How do you feel about rolling showers and the lifts up so people can roll to vanities and all that? I like um, the rolling showers. We take out showers all the time, or tubs, and turn them into rolling showers, ideally to have the space to make them at least 42 inches deep. So you have room for that person plus a caretaker to go in there too. But something simple we do in what we call kind of universal design, which is accessibility without you even knowing it, is you see the makeup counters that yeah. are lowered and they're but they make an ideal place for somebody to wheel in for a wheelchair that's handicap accessible later. Always put in the ADA height toilets and always have backing for grab bars and then they can always adapt. Plus you also have to have room around your toilet to, to get out of a wheelchair onto the commode. That's important. Yes. Yes. Kitchens, what, what type of tips do you have for the kitchen? Well, the kitchen, um, we do a lot of BA homes. Yep. which is always a, you know, ADA compliant. So you always have a countertop space, which is the same way as the bathroom. That's a lowered workspace. And you can do this in a universal design concept if you're building new, but it's a lot, it's easy to take out a double cabinet somewhere and drop the countertop. So a person in a wheelchair has that lower workspace. Um, as far as a lot has to do with demarcation too, um, as far as having differences in the color of your countertop and your flooring. One thing that we lose first when we're aging in place is the ability to see the color yellow. Mm -hmm. So it's been great with the LED lighting. Started out as white and blue, which is the perfect lighting, but they're now they're coming up with some soft white, warm white LEDs. So bright lighting, white lighting, and differences between the countertop and flooring because we also lose our depth perception. And just as important is lowering those electrical fixtures and plumbing fixtures so that someone in a wheelchair can reach them. Yes. Because, uh, and that, that's not really a big deal, is it? No, it's not, not at all. So if you, uh, is it your view a lot of these things can be incorporated in new home and remodeled fairly easy? They and, should and, be. And not even noticed? They should be. And that's what universal design is and it's done a lot in commercial but it's not in residential. So a lot of these changes can be done and you won't know it until you need it. You got a couple of neat things to show us. We're gonna to go to the Romac uh, Building Supply Show and Tell desk and, he's, and Cindy's gonna show us a couple of little tricks that have helped her, Jackie, and other clients she has. So meet us at the desk. 
We're at the Romac Building Supply Show and Tell Desk, and Cindy Coolier with DeBarco Building Corporations with me, and we've got a couple things we want to show you. Cindy, what do we have here? Okay, this is your standard countertop. A lot of people, when they design a home, they match their countertop with their flooring. Oh yeah, everybody matches. Yeah, in aging in place, we lose our depth perception first. In, in normal aging, strokes, Parkinson's, so when you have similar colors, it's very hard to find the edge when you're aging in place or with, with a standard disability. You always want demarcation, sorry, to where it's different colors from the edge from your countertops to your tile, a same way with carpeting to tile. So as we get older, as we get older, we don't want to match as much. That's right, that's now, right. Now, you've got a unique item here, and um, this is sort of neat. I've never seen one of these. Explain what this is. This is a lightweight foam threshold ramp. Okay. It holds up to 800 pounds. What I like about it is dual use. If you have a temporary situation, you can put this at your front door. Um, you can take it if you had a hip replacement, if you want to go socialize and your neighbors don't have a, a ramp. Mm -hmm. It's less than five pounds. You can take it with you. But in permanent situations, like my daughter in an electric chair, it's even more useful because there's a lot of places in a lot of houses we go to that don't have access in the S house for her. Cindy, in emergency situations when someone's broken a hip or something, how do you make evaluations in the home? What, what do you go first and look at? I look at access in and out of the home, access in and out of the bathrooms, and functionality in the kitchen. And I'll go do a free agent in place assessment of their home and give them recommendations. So that's one of the services that DeBarco Building Corporation yes. offers. You'll come in and make an age in place assessment. Yes. That's very important. Tell me what, what's the biggest mistake most uh, seniors make when they're coming down and building a home or remodeling in regards to aging in place? Not planning for the unknown, not planning for um, just aging, because we all age and we all have certain things that go wrong unexpectedly. Well, you know, we all we all think we we're just as young as we were 25, sure. 30 years ago. It's hard to give up, but I guess you're trying to say people need to get real when it comes to the People real. need to plan. Yeah. They need to plan, for sure. Cindy Cool, you're from DeBarco Building Corporation. Thank you for being our guest. One more time, if someone wants to get a hold of you, how can you be reached? You can call our office at 352-748-5228 or go to our website at debarco, which is D-I-B-A-R-C-O dot com, and send us a contact. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to go to our website, aroundthehouse.tv, to sign up for our YouTube channel and our weekly newsletter. Until next time, we will see you around the house.